What's going on, everyone? So in Scream 5, we saw the death of Dewey Riley. And I know there's a lot of mixed feelings about it. Uh, me, personally, I didn't mind them killing Dewey Riley because it was to kind of hit the reset. Show, you know, hey, let's raise the stakes. Nobody's safe. I, you know Sydney's safe. But outside of Sydney, like, we want to show that anybody can die, right? Because you got into this place of comfortability, right? It became very predictable. You knew Sidney, Gale, and Dewey were going to make it out and survive every single film. Uh, you knew that Dewey would get a little tore up, but in the end, he's going to give the thumbs up, and that would be that, but he'll ultimately survive. And then, you know, you go into Scream 5 with the, like, are they really going to do it? Are they not going to do it? And then they took him out, right? And the whole point was, again, to establish that sense of, of like, oh, you know, nobody is safe, right? To, to add that level of anxiety when you see scenes with Gale, with Sydney, with Dewey. And you get into Scream 6, and it's like, okay, well, now you have Kirby, now you have Gale. Are they going to kill Gale? Are they going to, you know, what's going to happen with Gale? How are they going to approach this? Yada, yada, right? And then, lo and behold, Gale doesn't die. Um, not only did Gale not die, but literally nobody died. Nobody. And that's where my frustration lies. Because I understand and I'll buy in if you want to take out a significant character. Right? Like, you kill Dewey and that is kind of your way of saying like, hey, you know what? Nobody's safe? Fine. But you can't do that and then backtrack on that. You can't do that and then just go, ah, we were just joking, stakes aren't raised anymore, we're just not going to kill anybody in this film. Right? Like, you, the only the only characters that died was, like, Anika, the ghost face, and then uh, in the bodega. But, like, no one died. Like, no, you had no significant buildup. You had several scenes that would have been awesome in which Mindy should have died and Chad should have died, you know, and Gail should have died. And it should have just been this bloodbath. Like, honestly, it should have been this thing where Chad died in an epic way. Mindy was left to die on the, on the subway and died. Um, you know, Gail ends up dying in the hospital. Boom, everybody's dead. And it's just basically Sam, Tara, and, you know, Kirby. And there you go. Like, that would have been great. That would have been perfectly... Hey, talk about a bloodbath. You establish something with Ghostface and, and Dewey in Scream 5, and then you follow through in Scream 6. They didn't do that. And that's a problem, right? But here's the thing. It's not just so much about uh, kill counts and whatnot, right? Look at Scream 96. That was one of the fewest kill, kill counts in the entire franchise. I'll, you know, Scream 6 now takes the game i mean tech if you count the bodega and stuff like that then it's like up there but i don't really count i'm talking about like actual characters to die but you look at scream 96 and it was a very tight film in which very few people died but the kills were so memorable right it was it was more about the the story and the narrative and what's driving that and i think that there's a genuine argument for that for scream 7 again i don't think it should be a movie where nobody dies I don't mind kind of this film being the the foundation building block film. And what I mean by that is, you know, say you have, you know, you have Gail, Sidney, Mark Kincaid. Um, you have Sidney's oldest daughter, uh, which you know, is supposed to be played by McKenna Grace. But whether it's her or whoever, right? Like, so like, let's say you have these like four, maybe five characters that, you're really building up, right? And you just have, like, just be this, this, like, they're the foundation. You got Sydney, her daughter, and and the, and the husband, and then you got Gail. Those four are the ones that end up surviving in the end. Do you go, and this is where I want, I want your guys' input down in the comments below, but, like, do you go kind of like a, have, like, a bunch of characters beyond you know, like the four or five core guys, and then have all of them die, and it's a total bloodbath, and it's kind of like, here's like, oh, yeah, whatever. You have like, let's say Gil, Sydney, Kincaid, and her oldest daughter is like the focus. You have like the other kids or whatever, but you kind of like can 
they they went with grandma or something, right? Like, okay, right, so you have basically the four main characters, and then do you have like ten or eleven characters that are like part of Sydney's friend group that are part of you know Sydney's daughter Tatum is supposed to be the name, like Tatum's friend group, and they all die, and it's just like these extra over the top deaths. Or do you kind of, again, kind of keep it this tight-knit Scream movie in which there there's not as many, let's say it's like five or six deaths, but they're incredibly memorable, right? Like, they're, they're very impactful deaths. And you kind of just, like, keep a, a smaller story, build up, like 96 did in a lot of ways, right? It was just like, it was like, a, a, you know, a handful of real characters, and they, but they built them up in such a way that you connected with the characters. So when they were getting picked off and dying, you were very upset. You know, you were bothered by it. Right? I would rather have that. I'd rather kind of just get back to get back to good writing, good storytelling, good character development. You know, yeah, you could you could have the throwaway character here. You know, like the Vince type or whatever. Like, fine, right? Like, I'm okay with that. You know, you have the opening scene. Right? Like, fine, okay, I'm okay with that. But for the most part, I'd like to have outside of like, you know, the, the Henry Winkler and the, the, you know, Drew Barrymore, I'd l rather have more of like the, the Randy, the Tatum, the Stu, the, you know, Bo uh, uh, the, I was going to say Bobby, <laughs> if you've seen Scary Movie, uh, <laughs> that's funny, but um, you get my point, Billy, right, you have all these, uh, all these characters that you're, that you're building up and, uh, I'd rather go that route and now you just start taking all of them out and the only ones that survive are like maybe you even kill Gail, right? Maybe it's, you know, it's 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 a total bloodbath, but it's a memorable bloodbath. It's not a bloodbath in the sense of like, oh, you have like 15 characters that died. It's more of like a, no, like each character's death was very thought out, was very, I mean, again, Tatum's garage scene kill, excellent. Right, like even uh, Randy in in Scream uh, Two. I know that's not '96, but even Randy's in Scream Two was like, you know, it's a very memorable kill. It's a kill that you're just like, like you still can play in your head without even like I can see that kill in my head without even having the the film on. You know, so like you you kind of go through those things, and it's like I just I'd really like to have. Kind of, I think that that's probably the best best approach for this film because then you can really kind of build Sydney and her family, right? Like you have an opportunity for a real dynamic here. You have an opportunity for a real story that could really just be different and out of the norm of all the other screen films. And I really want them to hit home on that. I'd rather you tell a story, like I said, with you know, uh, you know, Sydney Gale and Kincaid as like you know your Sydney Gale and Dewey type. And then, you know, you have, you know, a, a, a Sydney best friend, you have the daughter, and, you know, the best friend ultimately dies at some point, maybe towards the end. Uh, daughter, you know, her best friend dies or something. So now you kind of have, like, this mother-daughter parallels in a lot of ways, and it's like, oh, is Sydney really going to die? Like, you can add and, and build on these stakes of, like, oh, is she about to have a Maureen moment? Right, like you know, and maybe it, maybe even kind of have a stretch in the film where it, it seems like that, right? Where it's like, oh, like, do, do we just really see Sydney die? Like, do they really just do that? And then ultimately, like, you can have her survive, or you know, you kill her if you want, whatever, how you want to go about it. I, I think people would <laughs> probably riot if uh, if they killed Sydney, but you get my point, right? Like, build the character, tell the story, character development. I really feel as as is a lost art form in a lot of movies nowadays, right? I mean, especially in the recent Screams. I mean, again, the character development in Scream 5 was so bad. No, like, nobody liked any of the characters outside of, like, you know, Jenna Ortega. But it wasn't because of Tara. It was just because of Jenna Ortega, right? Like, it just, I mean, it was so bad. Like, people didn't like Sam and wanted, you know, uh, Melissa Barrera replaced, and it's like, then Scream 6, they did a better job with her. But still, a lot of those characters, like, who, like, we don't even know who Chad is. We don't even know who Mindy is outside of, like, she's, like, she likes movies and has knowledge of movies. But, like, who is she as a character? Like, Randy, you, you knew, 
right? Like Tatum, you knew, right? Like, it, and, and yes, in a lot of ways it was the tropes, but you still felt this connectability, this re relatability to those characters. I just, I want to see a more well thought out, more flushed out. I don't, to me, it's not so much about the kill count as it is the quality of kills, the quality of character development, because the, the more you develop those characters, the harder it is for us and audience to see them die. And I'd rather go that route. Um, but, as always, this is a discussion, and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? I do you agree with me? Do you think, like, yes, like, good story, develop the characters, really kind of hit home on the characters uh, in, in a sense to where we we really do fall in love with these characters and when we see them dying on screen, it's impactful. Um, or do you prefer kind of like the, no, just give me more blood, give me more gore, like, like let's just, no, give me 10, 11, 12 kills uh, in epic form, right? Or do you even care about the building, right? Like, because another kind of, I guess, middle would be you just have a bunch of like really memorable kills but they're just it's just more so because it's like over the top right it's like these over the top kills as opposed to um you know kind of like uh like i kind of want both right i want i would love some like awesome kills but also some kills that again are impactful right kills that are memorable Th those kind of things like again the Tatum kill in the garage was over the top. It was ridiculous, but it's memorable. It, it was so good. You can look past it, right? Like you can look past the silliness at times. Like it's just, and it was a character that so many people were beloved. I mean, so much. So a couple of years ago, people were talking about like, oh, she should have a twin sister and come back Rose McGowan and whatnot, right? Like just kind of my thoughts. But anyway, again, I feel whatever yours are. I love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.